Welcome to the class of Advanced Stats and Econometrics. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss multivariate analysis of variance or MANOVA. Learning objectives are, upon completing this chapter, you should be able to do the following. First is, explain the difference between univariate null hypothesis of ANOVA and multivariate null hypothesis of MANOVA. Discuss the advantages of a multivariate approach to significance testing compared to the more traditional univariate approach. State the assumptions for the use of MANOVA. Discuss the different types of test statistics that are available for significance testing in MANOVA. Multivariate analysis of uh, variance uh, and uh, again learning objectives are describe the purpose of post hoc test in ANOVA and MANOVA. Interpret interaction results when more than one independent variable is used in MANOVA. Describe the purpose of multivariate analysis of covariance that is MANCOVA. MANOVA defined. MANOVA is the multivariate extension of univariate techniques for assessing the difference between group means. In contrast to ANOVA, it can examine more than one dependent variable at the same time. ANOVA versus MANOVA. In the univariate case, a single dependent measure is tested for equality across groups. In the multivariate case, a variate is tested for equality. In MANOVA, the researcher actually has two variates, one for the dependent variable and another for the independent variables. The dependent variable variate is of more interest because the metric dependent measures can be combined in a linear combination as we have already seen in the multiple regression and discriminant analysis the unique aspect of manova is that multivariate optimally combines the multiple dependent measures into a single value that maximizes the difference across groups so the relationship between a univariate and multivariate procedure is shown below and this we are looking at ANOVA and MANOVA if the number of dependent variable is one univariate and there are two groups a specialized case then we can uh, do t-test but if there are two or more groups generalized case we can do ANOVA that, and these two t-test and MANOVA are applicable for univariate case if you have multivariate case two or more dependent variable and there are two groups a specialized case you can do Hotlinks t square and if you have more than two or two groups, that is a generalized case, we can do multi MANOVA, that is multivariate analysis of variance. So what are the decision process? Stage, stage one, objective of the MANOVA. Stage two, research design of MANOVA. Stage three, assumptions in multiple MANOVA. Stage four, estimating the MANOVA model and assessing overall fit. Stage five, Interpreting the MANOVA variate, stage 6, validation of the results. Stage 1, objective of the MANOVA. There are two objectives, first of all, to analyze a dependence relationship represented as the difference in a set of dependent measures across a series of groups formed by one or more categorical independent measures. Second is to provide insight into nature and predictive power of independent measures as well as the interrelationship and difference in the multiple dependent measures. What can we do with MANOVA? Three type of questions suitable for MANOVA. Multiple univariate question, structural multivariate question, questions, intrinsically multivariate question. Decision processes for MANOVA. MANOVA is an extension of ANOVA that examines the effect of one or more non-metric independent variables on the two or more metric dependent variables. In addition to the ability to analyze multiple dependent variables, MANOVA also has the advantage of controlling the experiment-wide error rate when there is some degree of intercorrelation among dependent variables. Providing more statistical power than ANOVA when the number of dependent variable is 5 or less. Decision processes for MANOVA. 
non metric independent variables create groups between which the dependent variables are compared many times the groups represent experimental variables or treatment effects the researchers should include only dependent variables that have strong theoretical support issues in the research design of manova that is part of stage 2 and there are first issue is sample size requirement overall and by group what is the what should be the minimum sample size overall and what should be the minimum sample size for each group and factorial design two or more treatment selecting treatments type and number interaction effects using covariate and cova and man cova okay uh, so we have uh, sample size requirement by group so sample size requirement per group for achieving statistical power of 0.80 in manova if the number of group is 3 4 5 and number of dependent variable and 2 4 6 8 and effect size are small medium large very large what are the different uh, sample size required for achieving a statistical power of 0.80 say for example if you have three groups number of dependent variables are 2 and effect size is very large then you only require a uh, sample size of 13 but if the same uh, effect size is small then you require uh 98 but if the uh, the number of dependent variable increases of course you require uh, more sample size say for example if effect size is very large so and number of dependent variable is 8 then the minimum sample size to achieve a uh, statistical power of 0.80 is uh 21 similarly if you go and increase the number of groups say 5 then again sample size required should also increase say number of group 5 number of dependent variable is 2 and effect size is very large then you require 16 and this table clearly shows that as number of group increases or number of dependent variable increases the sample size should increase but as sample size effect size decreases sample size should increase so research design of manova sales groups are formed by the combination of independent variables for example a three category non metric variables variable Uh, is taking value like low, medium, high, combined with a two-category non-metric variable, gender of male versus female, will result in three by two design with six sales group. Sample size per group is critical. Is a critical design issue. The minimum sample size per group must be greater than number of dependent variables. The recommended minimum sale size is 20 observations per sale or group. the researcher should try to have approximately equal sample size per cell group so covariate and blocking variables are effective ways of controlling for external external influences on the dependent variables that are not directly represented in the independent variable an effective covariate is one that is highly correlated with the independent dependent variable but not correlated with independent variables the maximum number of covariate in a model should be 0.10.10 into sample size minus number of group minus 1 so if number of group is 6 and uh, sample size is say 50 uh, say 100 then 100 into 0.10 is 10 minus 6 minus 1 is 5 so 10 minus 5 is 5 so maximum number of covariate in that case will be 5 objective of covariance analysis the objective of covariate is to eliminate any effects that affect only a 
portion of the respondent or vary among respondent similar to the use of a blocking factor covariates can achieve two specific purposes eliminate some systematic error outside the control of the researcher that can bias the result and account for differences in the responses due to unique characteristic of the respondents and the reference for all this is a book titled multivariate data analysis 8th edition publisher is sengage learning and authors are here babin anderson and black oh thanks for today's lecture that's it